What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to come clean about something. Every time I see a picture of a cocktail that you've made following a recipe that I shared, it truly makes me happy. But whenever I see next to that cocktail a bottle of low, low shell spirit, I cringe. I can't help it. I fear it will ruin your cocktail and I hate that. But that might just be me being snubbed because I never tried those spirits. I don't know what they taste like. I always go with what I love, with what I know, with what I've heard great things of and I'm curious about. And unfortunately, that's never, never the cheapest bottle on the shelf. But today I wanted to see if I was right or if I was wrong, so I ran around grocery stores and liquor stores here in Bordeaux, hunting for the cheapest bottle of bourbon I could find to try it in some cocktails. So if you guys are ready, we're about to empty up a bottle of cheap bourbon in some cocktails. Let's go. All right, my friends, so without any further ado, the cheapest bottle of bourbon I could find here in Bordeaux was the Old Dignity Bourbon. This pretty familiar shade bottle of bourbon with a never seen before label was found at the Aldi supermarket at a very good price of $14.69. According to the label, it's imported from the US and matured in oak cask, which is very good because that's two things that are required for whiskey to be called a bourbon and it clocks in at 40% of alcohol. Even though they don't talk about the match bill on the label, I assume it's at least 51% corn because otherwise it wouldn't be legal to call this a bourbon. Now I tried to find some more information or a website about the old Dignity Bourbon and I couldn't so that's not really reassuring in 2022. If you don't have a website and you're a bourbon company, are you trustworthy? I don't know. But that's the cheapest I could find and that was my goal so now let's crack it open and see how it tastes like. Let's go. It has a pretty light color which is probably the sign of a young bourbon but that doesn't mean bad so let's give it a try. It's actually pretty decent. We really get that corn, fat, mellow, bourbon flavor up front. Then you get quite a nice amount of spice, which I love in a bourbon because otherwise I think it's just too sweet when it's too high of a corn mash bill. So I guess this is pretty high rye and I, I enjoy that. The fact that it is only 40% of alcohol though, I'm afraid it might be shy in a cocktail, so we might have to tweak the recipes a little bit, but that doesn't mean that we can't make it happen. The nose is nice, it's really oaky. <laughs> Probably the thing that we hear the most in a bourbon tasting or whiskey tasting. Beautiful oaky nose. This is the thing that we hear all the time, but it's true. There's a nice oaky nose. Kind of like it. My friends, for 1469, I think we're going to make some pretty, pretty cool cocktails. So now let's go to the bar and let's give this one a try and some classics and see how it goes. Let's go. So the first cocktail I think about when I want to try a new bottle of bourbon after trying it neat, obviously, is in an old fashioned. Here I think the flavor spectrum of the bourbon will be pretty good in that cocktail because when I want to use bourbon in an old fashioned, I try to use something that's quite spicy. By that I mean that it has a high rye mash bill and here even though I don't know about it, I felt those spices when I sipped on the bourbon, so I think it's gonna be pretty good. There's gonna be one problem though, the ABV is pretty low, so it might feel watered down pretty fast, but by using the right amount of whiskey and the right ingredients, I think we can manage that. So we're gonna up the bourbon a little bit, we're gonna use raw sugar instead of simple syrup, so that way we're gonna limit the dilution to a maximum to achieve the same kind of strength and mouthfeel that we get in a great old fashioned. So we're gonna start in a mixing glass by adding about one bar spoon of raw sugar, and to that we're gonna add two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. I'm using a dasher bottle, so we're gonna double that amount. And then we're gonna add 2.5 ounces of bourbon. Now here, before adding the ice, we're gonna stir to dissolve all the sugar. I know it's easier when you do that with a splash of soda water before adding the bourbon, but here the goal is to reduce the dilution to a maximum. So we're simply gonna take just a little more time to dilute the sugar without adding more water. I'm just gonna try to see if the sugar amount is good. It's pretty good for me. I think I could add one more dash of Ango. That's good. So now we're gonna fill the mixing glass with ice. And then we're gonna give a brief stir to the cocktail just to chill it down, but not to dilute it too much. So we're just gonna cut by half what we usually do. So I'm gonna go for about 30 revolutions now. And then we're gonna strain the cocktail over a 
big block of clear ice because again the goal is to reduce the dilution to a maximum and quality ice melts slower so that's what we want right here then for the garnish we're gonna go with the usual orange zest and we're gonna place it over the drink and there we go let's give it a try to the cheapest bourbon old-fashioned I could possibly make cheers it's actually very nice the mouthfeel is rich exactly how I like an old-fashioned it almost feels like we used gum syrup it is that rich I really like it it is very smooth too but it has just enough bite so you don't have the feeling that you're having an old-fashioned made with a very low ABV bourbon so that would be my tip for you if you're using a low shelf bourbon with a low ABV up the bourbon use raw sugar instead of simple syrup an extra dash of ango a quick stir and quality ice and you're gonna make yourself a delicious bourbon old-fashioned at a very affordable price. So now before we try it in a second cocktail, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. So we have been talking about cheap bottle of booze since the beginning of this video, but now let's talk about something with a little more, no, with much more value. Let's take this bottle of old Armagnac, for example. If you kept this bottle in a warehouse next to many other bottles of the same kind, and you would let the warehouse lend your bottle to other people, yeah, lend the bottle to other people, it wouldn't have much value right well it's the same concept with your money and the bank but let's pretend for a minute that this bottle was the only of its kind that it was created by a master French distiller then the value of this bottle will continue to go up such as a fine piece of art and if you could buy a piece of this bottle and then earn money with it once it's sold to a lucky buyer wouldn't that be amazing I mean do you think I can do this with this one Anyways, that's exactly what today's sponsored masterwork does with contemporary and fine art. They find and purchase work from artists like Picasso, Banksy, and Basquiat, and then they let me and you invest in that art. It may sound weird, but art has performed very well as an investment this year because it just doesn't behave the same way traditional investments do. The first six months of this year, even as $13 trillion was lost in the stock market, art sales, on the other hand, has hit their highest ever first half total and Masterwork has backed up this point. As recently as early October, they sold the painting for a 21.5% net return. That's like putting in 15,000 and getting over 18,000 back. And like a good Armaniac, people value good investments. Masterwork has over 500,000 members so far, and there's even a waiting list if you want to sign up. But you can skip it if you use the link in the description below and see if fine art is the right investment for you. So thank you very much, Masterwork, for sponsoring this episode. But now let's go back and making some cheap bourbon cocktails. Let's go. Next, I want to try it in a sour template and see if the bourbon can still shine next to the heavy dose of citrus. But while we're at it, we're also going to make this a daisy. So part of our sugar component will be a liquor. So that way we're going to see if the bourbon can fight next to not just one, but two other flavors in the cocktail. We're going to base our recipe on a brandy crusta, but we're going to use bourbon instead of cognac. So we're going to start in a cocktail shaker with two ounces of the bourbon quarter of an ounce of marshkin liquor, half an ounce of simple syrup, and three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I'm gonna fill the shaker with ice, give it a good shake for about 10 seconds. And we're gonna fine strain it in a chilled cocktail cool. There we go, our bourbon daisy. Cheers. You see, in this cocktail, the maraschino, even with only just a quarter of an ounce, is the dominant flavor with the lemon. The bourbon is a little bit lost. If I didn't know, I would have a hard time telling you this is a bourbon-based cocktail. I think we should give it a try in a basic, sour, with no other extra flavor than the lemon. Let's go. Two ounces of bourbon three quarters of lemon juice and half an ounce of simple syrup. And give it a good shake for about 10 seconds. Once again, fine strain it in a chilled cocktail cup. And we're gonna leave it as is because I wanna see if it smells like bourbon. Cheers. Yep, already on the nose, now I get, now I get the bourbon. It's a little bit thin on the palate, but it's, well balanced 
That's not usually something I do with sour cocktails, but I think here it could beneficiate of using a gum syrup, just to add a little bit in terms of mouthfeel, because now it's thin, it's slightly watered down because the bourbon is only 40% of alcohol. Once again, this is a problem in terms of flavor. It is a little bit shy, but it's there uh, because you know, 40% alcohol means 60% of water, right? Kind of. So we are less flavorful than a bourbon at 50% of alcohol, for example. So in terms of flavor, we are there, but just like we're a little shy, but in terms of texture, mouthfeel, and burn of the alcohol, we are a little bit off. So we could compensate that with a little bit more of texture from the syrup. So by using a gum syrup, we could counterbalance that. And I think it would be very nice. So my tip for you, if you want to use a low shelf bourbon with a low ABV, Two ounces of bourbon, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, and a half an ounce of gum syrup. And that way, I think you're gonna have a pretty decent, cheap bourbon sour. Now let's try it in something that's gonna be pretty challenging for that bourbon, because I feel it's a little weak in terms of flavor, even though it's tasty. Let's try it against some other bold flavors in a stirred down cocktail. Let's try it in a boulevardier. Good luck, my friend, old dignity. Two ounces of bourbon, and then I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of each other ingredient. So that way we're giving the bourbon some chances to stand out. We're gonna give it kind of a brief stir. Then we're gonna strain this over a big block of ice, again, to prevent over diluting the cocktail too fast. Then we're gonna garnish this with some orange oils. And there we go, the cheap Boulevardier. Cheers. This is kind of disappointing. All we get from the bourbon is kind of the vanilla notes, like the vanillin from the aging process. It kind of tastes just like bitter candy. Nope, no, that doesn't work. And I don't see any ways I could make this better with this bad boy right here. So the Boulevardier is a fail. Maybe if we get rid of the Campari in the equation and we make a bourbon Manhattan, Hmm. So we're gonna start with two ounces of that bourbon, three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth, and three healthy dashes of Angostura bitter. Give it a brief stir, to chill it down, and again, don't dilute it too much. And we're gonna strain it in a chilled Nicanora. Cheers. That's <laughs> honestly very boring and sad, yeah, that's the word. It is sad, it is a sad cocktail. I kind of wish that I would just realize that my little uh, snobby nose of uh, having just quality spirits all the time was like overrated. As soon as you mix it in cocktails in something that's just a little bit complex, it's gone. It's gone. There's no body, there's no flavor, there's no burn of alcohol. It's just like there's nothing. It's just like you could use vodka and that would be the same thing. That Old Dignity made a pretty decent old fashioned, made a pretty decent sour. But as soon as you incorporate some more layers of flavors, some more complex flavors, some stronger and bolder flavors, that boy is gone. Like it's a shy gentleman. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, if you're still watching, because that was kind of an unusual video for me today, but I had a feeling I had to do it. And uh, I'm sorry if I offended anyone, that was not the goal, but I really think that using the right spirit or using quality spirit in mixed cocktails usually makes a difference to make better cocktails. It's not pouring money down the drain. So I hope you're gonna agree with me. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this video. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already and turn that bell on if you want to make sure not to miss the next video that's gonna be next week so my friends i'm not gonna drink this one as a bye cheers because it's just no good so i'm just gonna tell you bye and see you next week peace